Well, today we're talking about the devil, Lucifer, Satan, and his ultimate fall, his ultimate destruction. I've read the end of the book. You know, in the public ministries and dealing with people, you have people who you know Satan rules. Well, no, not according to the Bible. Maybe right now. But the end of Satan is the picture you see now, fire. And people run from fire. They pack everything up they can to move out of fire. But when it comes to sin and believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, they don't care. So Revelation chapter 12, verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a cloud of twelve stars. That's Israel. Verse 3, There appeared another wonder in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon. The Bible says there's dragons. China celebrates dragons. All these games and movies and video games celebrate dragons. Dragons, well, let's read more about the dragon. Behold, a great red dragon having seven heads, ten horns, seven crowns upon his head. His tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and then cast them in the earth. And a dragon stood before the woman. Okay. Verse 7. We're just talking about the dragon. And there was war in heaven. Think about that. People worry about the Third World War, and there is a Third World War coming. The Bible says so. But in heaven, there's a war. And the Christians have been raptured, and we are in the time of the tribulation period. Here in Revelation. Us born-again Christians are going to see what we're going to read right now. In heaven, Christians are going to see, angels are going to see an angelic war. And there was war in heaven, Michael, that's the archangel, that's the prince of Israel, Daniel, and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not neither was there a place found any more in heaven. The great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, Genesis 3. The serpent was more subtle than any of the beasts of the field. And he said, yeah, as God said, that serpent in Genesis 3 is the dragon. That's not all. Verse 9, called the devil and Satan. That dragon game, that dragon movie, that dragon book is a representation. That dragon symbol of a nation is a representation, according to the King James Bible, of Satan, of the devil, of the old serpent. You as a Christian have no business dealing with dragons. But it's a free country. You want ashes at the judgment seat of Christ? Go ahead. I warned you. Call the devil and Satan that deceiveth the whole world. I know a preacher one time. Oh, oh, smutty face. Oh, smutty face. We're going to get all you. Yeah, yeah. And oh, smutty face. The Satan, devil, Lucifer, the old serpent. Man, he destroyed you. He took you down. Your church broke up on you. Your church turned you into the, to the city. I can't imagine what you are today if you haven't repented and gotten right with God. I hope you do. He was cast out into the earth. That's going to be seen because we're going to look at something with Lucifer. But this will be the final time Satan goes to heaven. We'll see in a moment. 
He will never go to heaven again after this. And we Christians are going to watch Michael and his angels, and we're going to watch Lucifer and his angels, or the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his angels. They're going to battle it out. And, he, and the Christians are not going to have anything to do with it. We're just going to be watching. Instead of some stupid Sunday football game, which has no value, has nothing. Stupid preachers will get up in the pulpit and wear their, their team colored ties or shoes or pants or whatever. You're foolish. Idolaters. Like Satan is. You've been deceived. All that will burn up at the judgment seat of Christ. Wickedness. He was cast through the earth and his angels were cast with him. I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God, heaven, and the power of his Christ, Jesus. For the accuser of the brethren is cast on. That accuser of the brethren, that's Satan. And we'll see that in a, in a moment in Job 1 and 2. Satan goes up to God's throne. And he said, Satan says to God, uh, You see what style he did? You see what your Christian did? Book, chapter, and verse is where he did wrong. Thou shalt not. He did it. Thou shalt. He didn't do it, God. That's the accuser of the brother. That's me, and that's every saved person. Satan goes up to the, you see that, God? The eyes of the Lord in every place, the eyes of the Lord in every place, beholding the evil and the good. When we do evil and sin against God, Satan's up there like, ha, ha did you see that? I guarantee you don't tell God the good things that we do for God. No, he won't do that. He's the accuser of the brethren. Is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. I am saved by the blood of Jesus Christ alone. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. It says, verse 12, Therefore rejoice ye heavens, plural, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the heavens and the earth of the sea, for the devils come down unto you, <coughs> having great wrath. In the tribulation period, that, that dragon, the devil, is going to come down, and man, is he angry. He just lost the war. He's not allowed in heaven no more. And he's going to come down, and he's going to take his wrath on you that are here in the earth. That did not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He's going to take his wrath on God's people, the Jews. Better pray for the Jews. Bear witness to the Jews before the tribulation period comes. Oh, there'll be Jews that come out of it. But man, it's going to be hard. He that endures to the end shall be saved. That ain't church age doc. So that's the dragon. That's Satan. That's the devil. That's your games. That's your video game. That's your books. That's your movies. That's your television program. That's your cartoon. That is the symbols of some of the nations. And your martial arts. You need to get out of it right now. You need to get on your knees and say, God, I'm going to get rid of that garbage. God, I'm not going to do that no more. God is going to burn in the flames of fire. I am not going to do that. No more. No more dragon. Get rid of it. I mean, the Muslims will say, no more pig. Anything to do with a pig, we'll throw it out, get rid of it. Burn. How come the Christian can't get rid of everything of the Satan? How come the Muslims are more faithful to stupidity and the Christians are not faithful to the Bible? Answer me. See the flames? Just to see the Christ. All your works of the flesh. All your idolatry. All your paganism. Ashes. Wood, hay, and stuff. Revelation 20. Revelation 20. Verse 1. Revelation 20. Verse 1. I saw an angel come down from heaven having a key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. 
And he laid hold on the dragon, the old serpent, the devil, and Satan, bound him for a thousand years. God says, Michael, get your angels, get that guy out of here. God calls an angel, hey, angel, I don't know who he is, I don't know what he is, I don't know what number he is, I don't know his name. And he says, come here. Get that chain over there and bind the devil. You know, there are preachers, there are Christians out there, we're going to bind the devil. Oh, no, you're not. The devil will kick your butt 300,000 times to the ninth power. You think you got power over him. You're not going to go charging the devil with your water gun. We ain't going to get nowhere. Don't mess with the devil. The Bible says flee from him. Flee. God has given us armor against the wicked one. For a thousand years, he is bound. Look at chapter, I mean, same chapter, chapter 20, verse 7. Revelation 20, verse 7. When the thousand years are expired, uh, and a thousand years expire. Oh, look, look at the end, look at verse 20, verse 30. And cast him in the bottom of the pit and shut him up. Shut up, Satan. God did that, not me. Set a seal upon. They set a seal on, on, on Jesus' tomb. God says, okay, I'll put a seal on yours. And you should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. So, verse 8, uh, verse 7. When the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Millennium, thousand years. At the end of the millennium, let him loose. He shall go out and deceive the nations, which are the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog. That's at the end of the millennium. To gather them together to battle the number of us as the sand of the sea. That's a lot. There rose up on the breath of the earth and compassed the camp, camp of the saints about and the beloved city, that's Jerusalem, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them, the army. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast of the Antichrist and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever. There is the end of Satan. Satan rules. He goes to the lake of fire. And he's in torment forever, along with everybody else that goes into hell. Jesus tells us in Matthew, hell was made for the devil and his angels. God sent forth his son that we may not go to hell. You throw yourself into hell. So that's the end of the devil. That's close. Devil's in hell. A lake of fire. And he's there for forever. He ain't there now, but he will be. And we will see that day. We will see those angels. Not a preacher. Not a Baptist. Not a baptism. An angel. Don't mess with angels. The Bible says over in the Old Testament, one angel took, took part in killing a, a, a majority of an army. When they woke up in the morning, they were all dead corpses. Okay, that's that. Look at the book of Job. Job 1. Job chapter 1. And we're not doing an in-depth study here. I mean, as much, these chapters here, there's much to study. But Job chapter 1, verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God, angels, came to present themselves before the Lord. Here's all the angels. God's angels. The devil's angels. Appear before God. Where's God? He's in heaven. He's on his throne. Right now, today. Here we are. And Satan came also among them. Right now, God is on his throne. There's angels. So if you die 
before the rapture and your Savior, absent from the body, <coughs> present with the Lord. And you're up in heaven, glory, hallelujah. It's, ah! What is that? One of the angels come in, what's your problem? What's that? Oh, I see you didn't read your Bible. Come on, what is it? That's Satan. Ah, he's not a guy in a red suit with a pitchfork. No, he's not. When you get to heaven, you'll see Jesus. You'll see God's throne. You can't see God, for God is a spirit. And you're going to see Satan. And you're going to see Satan battle Michael. Michael's going to kick Satan's butt. And then the angel's going to come along and put a chain about Satan and put him in the tomb. And seal him. And he's going to come out of that tomb. He's going to deceive the nations and all that. God's going to send fire. See the fire? And Satan goes in the lake of fire forever. But right now, he goes up to, before God. He is standing. Look, 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 look. And the Lord said to Satan, where cometh thou? And Satan answered the Lord. They are within distance of each other. God, Jehovah, the Lord of the King James Bible, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He is in presence of Satan. Satan's in the presence of God. They talk to each other. Right now, today. You say, when until? Revelation 12, when he's kicked out of heaven. And look what Satan said. From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. So if God were to open your eyeballs, you might see Satan or one of his devils go walking by. You'd be petrified. You would poop and pee your pants three times over. And think you're freaking out and end up in a, in a mental war. If God were to open your eyes. You know they say, and I've never had it, but I, I think I knew one man who get the DTs from alcohol. When they go into the fit or whatever it, whatever it is, they start seeing snakes break serpent, wrapping themselves around poles and snakes around the buses. Yeah. You know what they used to call the places where you bought alcohol when I was a child? It used to be called the spirit shop. Job, we're not done with Job. Job chapter 2, verse 1. And there came a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Satan came amongst them to present himself before the Lord. Said unto Satan, said the same thing. Ain't just once. A lot of these Christians, because they're pastor and they're Sunday school teachers, don't teach them nothing. And they don't read their Bible. They don't even have the right Bible. They don't even know what's going on in the spirit world, in the soul world, and the body world of God the Father, Satan, the arch enemy, Christians, and unsaved people. They have no idea. I know people, I don't read the Old Testament. You're foolish. Well, we just do the Beatitudes. Of 66 books. There are people who never opened their Bible. The book of Habakkuk has never seen the light of day. And I ain't talking about tobacco. Nahum has never seen. Nahum don't even have the fingerprints of the person that owns that Bible. You know what my Bible here? My Bible's got my fingerprints on every single page. Except the concordance. I'll use that when I need to. It's got coffee stains. It is marked. It's got tears. It's got drawings. It's got doodling. It's got my DNA on every page. I still don't know all. And I will learn more and more as I grow as a Christian. And desire the Lord. Many Christians, you don't realize when you get to heaven what's going to happen. I had one guy tell me, oh, well, I could tell you. I'm going to high five Jesus and my man Jesus. Said, You're a fool. You're a fool. You're a fool. Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14. 
If I sound weird, my ears are clogged up. I apologize. Allergies and I got an ear infection. Isaiah 14, verse 12. Oh, how art thou fallen from heaven? This is before Genesis 1 1. Or 1 2, excuse me. Genesis 1 gap, Genesis 1 2. I know a lot of people don't believe in a gap. I do. You don't want to believe in a gap? Perfectly fine. You're not going to go to hell because you don't believe in the gap theory. But between Genesis 1 1, Genesis 1 2, there was another intergalactic battle between Lucifer and God. And you ever wonder why the moon is cratered and the planets are cratered and we got craters here on Earth? It's because the uh, angelical battle won. In Revelation, is angelical battle two. You know, like World War One, World War Two. Saint uh, Lucifer and his forces battled God and his forces long before man was put on this planet. And God says, get out of here. But he didn't say get out of here for good because Job, which is the oldest book in the Bible, not Genesis. Genesis was written by Moses up on the mount after Exodus 20. You will find Job and his crew in the timely line of, of Esau. And so what we learn is that how they're falling from Lucifer. Lucifer falls. He becomes a dragon. The devil or Satan. But this fall does not prevent him from not going back. Job 1 and 2. Revelation 12. There's that angelical war. He is cast out. <coughs> cast out of heaven. Excuse me. He never returns back to heaven. He is locked up for a thousand years. And then fire comes down. He goes into the lake of fire and will be in the lake of fire for all eternity. He will never see the new heavens, new earth, and new Jerusalem. So right now is before Adam and Eve, before Genesis 1-2. And if you don't believe in the gap theory... I don't know where you would put, but this is before Adam and Eve, before the garden. Those who believe the gap theory, this is Genesis 1, 1, then Isaiah 14, 12, and then Genesis 1, 2. How is there fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Not Satan. Lucifer. Luxufer. The light bearer. The light bearer. I have a note here. I'm trying to find it. I'm trying to find my note. It's somewhere. I write these notes and I can't find it. I got 14 and I got 15. I don't see 15. 16. I don't see 15. Somewhere. I know that you, when I learned in school, he's called the Lux Super, the Light Bearer. That's important. That's important. Light Bearer. Son of the Morning. Now, if you have a Bible that says Daystar, blow it up. Call the ATF and say, ATF, I've got a Bible that's wrong. I don't have a King James Bible. That Bible is of Satan. That Bible is of Alexandria, of Westcott and Hort. That Bible may be out of the Codex Vaticanus or the Codex Sinicated. I, I, ATF, I need some dynamite. I need to blow this Bible up so no one would ever read it. Nobody would ever open up. I got to get rid of this Bible. And excuse me while I go to the bookstore and get a King James Bible. Because Lucifer is not the day star. Because over in Revelation, we are told Jesus the morning star. The bright and morning star. And if you were to put Lucifer as a day star, Revelation as the bright and morning star, Jesus, you make Lucifer and Jesus one. That's worse than a Mormon saying that Lucifer or the devil and Jesus are brothers. That's worse. Because you're saying Lucifer is Jesus. That's what your Bible is saying. If it's not King James. 
If your Bible says Daystar, burn it, destroy it, eliminate it. Don't you dare read anymore. You turn off this video right now, run down to the bookstore, get yourself a King James Bible. Make sure, make sure it says Jesus in Acts chapter 7 when, when, uh, when Philip gives the history of the Jews. Make sure it don't say Joshua, let him in. Make sure it says G. Because even the devil messes with the King James Bible. When, when Jesus let them in, I forget the stack face, I forget the chapter. You got yourself a King James Bible. Come back here, open it up, start the video again. And when, you, when your spouse comes home, you show oh, what's that smell? I had to burn some trash. Like a preacher said about me, you believe that King James Bible came out of the mouth of Jesus. Amen! I'm glad you can see it. Why can't you see the truth? Why can't you believe the truth? And when I was 14 years old, I decided what where the God is, and it's not the King James. Me, 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 me. You're on Satan's side. Let's keep going. So, son of the morning, how they are cut down to the ground, earth, which did weaken the nation. So these nations, what's going on with, with America? What's going on with the destruction? What's the violence? What's all these nations? Why is Africa, I mean, why is Russia fighting? Why is Africa starving? Why is India looking for food? Why is England going total floppy? Why is, why, why, why earthquakes and, and famines and monsoons and Satan? Satan. For that was sent in heart, I will send up to, and, and what Satan does, we're not going to look at is, Satan wants God's position. What God has, what God does, and what God is, Satan wants. We're not going to go in deep lesson. You search my, my website, you'll find out I do have videos on Satan. I have lessons. <coughs> Okay, verse 15. Thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. That's after the millennium. So, between 12 and 15, you've got the Old Testament, you got the Gospels, you got the church period, you have the tribulation period, and you will have the millennium. Though he's chained in the millennium and cast into the lake of fire, at the end of the millennium. That's that. Matthew. Matthew. Chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. I'll show you a couple things here real quick. Matthew 4, 5. And the devil takes him up to a holy city... And set him on the pinnacle of the temple. Satan is going before God. Job 1 and 2. Speaks to God. He says, I am walking to and up and down the earth. Here he is walking on the earth. Here he is in Jerusalem. Talking to Jesus. Now you may not have the devil in your house. You may not have the devil battling you as a Christian. But you got a devil. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. If you are living and trying to do right, you've got in the in the the scope of the devil and his devils enemies. And they're around you. Because there are Christians when they get up in the morning, the devil's in hell, ah oh, hits news. We don't need to worry about him. He's not going to try to live right. He's not going to try to witness. He's, he's on our side. He's a Benedict Arnold. Matter of fact, sometimes he does good for us rather than for Jesus. Oh, go back to bed. I hope when the angels say when Stiley gets up, oh boy. I mean, he's not perfect, but you know, he's trouble. He may not be public enemy number one, but he's on the list. 
He's going to go to the grocery store and he's going to buy stuff and he's going to put one of them gospel tracts in the next grocery bag. And those cashiers better watch him because they do. And I have been stopped by the cashiers putting a gospel tract in the bag. Better watch that guy. He's going to talk to some Christians and if they're wrong, he's going to try to help them. We'll get the pastor after him. So Satan, in heaven, Satan is on the earth. And the devil. <coughs> and he's going to get kicked out of heaven forever. We'll see that. And he was kicked out of heaven as Lucifer. He gets around, verse 5. I did the verse 5. Uh, verse 3. Go backwards. That one. And the tempter came to him. We're talking about the devil. Now we've already read he's the accuser. Job 1 and 2. Did you see what Job did? Oh yeah, right. Hey, you want, let me tell you about Job, God. And Satan don't need to lie. Though he's the liar, John 8, 44. When Satan goes up to heaven, he says, Styly Hayward, he don't need to lie. I'm a sinner. I don't live perfect for God. Never have. My aim is, but my standings in Christ, my state, I got more than 50 of them, I'm sorry to say. So when the devil goes up to God and says, you see what Stanley did, he don't need a lie. He's also the tempter. I've got one Pacific sin, I'm not going to tell you what it is. And I tell you, oh, how that sin comes into my life. Wherever I am, whatever I do, Satan's there trying to get me to do. He will use anyone at any time. Satan don't need to put alcohol in front of me. That's not going to tempt me. You want to turn me off, open up a beer because it smells like piss. That's a Bible word. Look it up. Now for you, it may be it may be alcohol. Maybe the temptation is alcohol. Actually, let me, I hate to say it, but let me, there, there is a sin I, I can say. I used to smoke cigarettes. And I used to smoke cigars. And I used to smoke pipes. Lisa used to love when I smoked pipes. My medical conditions work from it. It's a sin. It's not something I say, whoopee do, I'm glad I do. Which I never had. But we had to stop at a gas station the other day and get some things, and there was a guy come out and he was smoking. And that smoke came out, came inside the car while I was sitting like <laughs> Sinner. I walk in the store and I see Tipperella cigar and I look at it and like my mouth starts watering. Sinner, saint sinner, born, born, born again, blood of Jesus Christ, going to heaven. Oh, Tipperella. <laughs> and I've been tempted. I've been tempted to put my hand on purchase. That's the devil. Now maybe for you, maybe smoking and tobacco, maybe it disgusts you. And you look like, ugh. I mean, I did the chewing tobacco and all that. Maybe tobacco, whatever. Then Satan ain't going to use tobacco. Satan will have a guy come outside of a gasoline place. While his, I think his wife or group or whoever it was, mother, whoever. While she's inside, and he'll light up right in front of our car. And smoke comes right in the car. I'm over there inhaling it. I'm a second-hand smoker. It's Satan. You could put a million lottery cards. Scratch off the numbers off. I don't care. I don't do that. Never did. That don't, that don't. But there, you know, smoking and that other sin, I'm not going to tell you. There are some others. God wasn't. Satan wants to tempt me. Give me all red lights. 
That's a tempter. He's an accuser. He's a tempter. Now, one other place. Look at Matthew 4, 6. It says unto him, this is Satan, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, Lisa, any time thou dash thy foot against the stone, um, that is out of Psalms. That's out of Psalms 91. Yeah, 91 verses 11 and 12. But Satan doesn't quote 13. But that's not the point right now. I'm here to tell you, Satan quotes scripture. He knows the Bible. And he's not afraid if you're going to get your King James Bible out. He's not afraid of the King James Bible if you don't open it. He's not afraid of you if you don't study it. You know, you take up that King James Bible. Oh, he's like... He look at you like it take you a few minutes to find Psalms. The Bible says, "Study show thyself approved unto God, a worker that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth." All right now, Satan. But if you're gonna go running in and battle Satan. You better know your Bible, because Jesus and the temptations of the devil. Every single time Jesus quotes him Scripture, he quotes it correctly. Satan quoted what God said, sort of, to Eve. <clears throat> okay? Uh, Luke 4. Luke chapter 4. He gets, a, he gets an end, but... Man, what he does between now and then... I mean, do you realize at the end of the millennium, we read, he gets a, a, a multitude as the sand of the sea, if not more, against Jesus, against the Jews, against the Christians? What did I say? He deceives them so much, a thousand year reign of Jesus, the perfect reign on this earth, no curse, and they come out of that thousand years, and Satan gets a multitude of people. That amazes me. A lot of people tell me, oh, show me God, show me Jesus. That ain't going to work. Israel saw God on the mount of the fire and earthquakes and smoke. Their wilderness journey was, wow. Uh, Luke 4, 5. Devil taking them up to a high mountain. Shows all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. That's a moment of time. Presidency, running for the White House, a moment of time. The complete rule over China or Russia or the King of England, a moment of time. How many kings have been in England? How many presidents have we had? How many rulers in Russia? I mean, can you even name the ruler of China today? I mean, we're worried about China, China, the COVID-19, China, Walmart, China. Can you name who the leader is of China today? A moment of time. That's all it is. The devil says unto him, all this power will I give thee. If you fall down and worship me, I'll give you every nation. I'll give you every kingdom. That's what he's saying. For this is delivered into unto me. And to whosoever I will, I will give it. Satan says it's all mine, and he does not get rebuked by Jesus. I'm not saying President Biden. I'm not saying Donald Trump. I'm not saying Obama. I'm not saying the Clintons, the Bushes, the Fords, the uh, Carters, the uh, Reagan, anybody. But there could have been a president put into the White House. That man may have said, Satan, I'll do whatever you want. 
you know, like the scene in Star Wars, when Anakin Skywalker becomes Dark Vader and he bows down before the Sith Lord. You could have leaders like that. You could have a, a CEO of a company that has given all he wants and all he desires. He's going to give it to Satan. Satan said, okay, I'll give it to him. There could be rock stars and singers saying, I'll give it all to you, Satan. If you just let me have the charts, let me have the gold and platinum record. If you just give it to me, I'll fall down and worship you, Satan. You can read their albums. You can read the back of the of the albums and the records and the music and their own testimony. Many have said they've done it. It's only a moment of time. He's got the authority. He's got the power. Oh, they stole the vote. Maybe Satan did it. Maybe God did it. Uh, Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. Verse 18. All right. 10, 18. Uh, and he said, Jesus said to him, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. That, that, that's not Revelation 12 because that hasn't happened. That's Isaiah. When Satan, Lucifer, came out of heaven, cast out, and became the, the, the devil or Satan or the dragon, when he left heaven, He shot out of heaven like lightning. Now they're trying to mandate now, and I don't know how far it's going to go, but they're trying. Everybody needs to get, must get by law, an electric car. Electric is the devil. That electric car may have something to do with the mark. Maybe something gasoline can't do. Or a four-stroke engine. But maybe electric, the only way you know you can start that car is you gotta have the mark. I don't I don't know. There are people been seriously electrocuted. Power goes out today and it's it, even for me, it, it's chaos. What can you do when there's no power? That electricity is a sign, and it been that electricity has been a sign of many of your rock stars and icon of companies. Jesus said that pictures Lucifer falling from heaven. Remember, I said Lucifer, the light bearer. We're not done yet. Yeah, uh, about the light bearer, but I want to make one little break. First Corinthians seven. Then we'll get to the last verse. I want to make a little break here. I want to make a note here. 1 Corinthians 7, verse 5. 7 is about marriage. 7, 5. And I'm in 2 Corinthians. So, wait, I'm looking at the bad leg. What on earth? All right, here I am. I'm with you. First Corinthians seven five. Yep, there we go. Now seven is about marriage, and what seven five is saying: you and your wife has come together. You say, honey, we want to serve the Lord. We want to fast. Now, I'm not talking about a fast of food or drink. I think, honey, I think you and I should refrain each other from sexual pleasures. For an X amount of time. I've never heard that fast before. But. It says in 75. Defraud not the other. Set to be for the consent of time. You talked about it. That you may give yourself to fasting and prayer. 
and come together again in Satan tempt. Here's the tempter. You not for your inconsistency. Forgive me for not being able to say it right. So whether food or drink, you fast, or even say, you know what? Because when they were at the mount, in Exodus 19, God told them not to come at your wives. The Catholic Church will tell their priests and, and nuns, no sex at all. Yeah, right. The religions out there, you refrain from sex. What Paul is telling them, all right, if you do that, you better come back together in marriage then. Because if you don't, Satan will come in. Satan will put those girly pictures, those, those beautiful looking women in front of your husband's eyes. And he'll put those men in front of you. And he'll put that temptation. He'll put those thoughts in your in his or her head. And then in the end, you got adultery. And that's one of the biggest things in marriage that the wife does not give her husband, oh, you don't want to believe what my husband does, wants me to do. You married him. You and my husband, you married him. The marriage bed, marriage bed is part of the marriage. When you defile the marriage bed, you invite Satan. Yeah, you could be a King James, you could be a soul winner, you could be in the proper church, but if you don't give your spouse the sex they need, Satan will come in. All right, 2 Corinthians. Last, back to Lux Super. That was a break. Some of you may have got mad at me. 2 Corinthians 11, 14. And no marvel. I mean, like the comics. For Satan, there he is, himself, is transformed. Transformers. Came before your eyes. That was a toy when I grew up as a child. An angel of Lux Hooper, light. I died and I saw a light. You better be careful, that light could have been Satan. You could be walking down a tunnel and it was a train. There could have been those OR lights. I, I've had a couple surgeries. And the last one I had, before they put me out, they gave me the anesthesia. They actually uh, put something over my eyes and taped my eyeball. Uh, my eyes, not my eyeball. And I heard say, all right, turn the lights on. With, with my, with, with the, whatever they put in my cloth or, or band or something, and the tape, I still saw that light. Then they had me breathe and I went to sleep. And when I woke up, the first thing I saw was light before I opened my eyes. Now, have you ever been in the morning before you open up your eyeballs and you can see the light coming through the window? You gotta be careful because Satan is an angel of light. He's not a man of red, he may be a man of light bulbs. Light. I used to think it's funny because my dad used to work for the gas company, it was part electric company. And the company had a emblem of a man of a light bulb and a smiley face, and from the light bulb was an electric uh, lightning. You know, they say you get an idea, you get a light bulb goes on. And Christmas and all these holidays, you get the lights out, and you put the lights on the Christmas tree. Be careful. Well, that's not it. That's it. No, but. There is no great thing if his ministers be transformed. Who's the his? The his goes back to Satan. Satan has ministers. As they transform and ministers are righteous. You may think that that man behind that pulpit is a God sent ordained preacher or pastor or teacher or scholar, he may be the devil. And Paul and Jesus both, and Peter warns us about sheep's, I mean, wolves in sheep's clothing. That's what we're talking about. And I've met some men behind the pulpit, and they're not sheep. They're Satan. 
power, Satan's ambassador, Satan's minister. Be Larry. When you're watching or listening to somebody, have a Bible. And when in doubt, check it all out. Make sure who you're listening to is not Satan. A wolf in sheep's clothing. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And gratefully thank you if you share and tell others and get our ministry out. Thank you.